Um, when I started looking into feedback, particularly feedback for the performing arts, I went back to my own kind of university days and looked at what kind of feedback I was receiving um, back then. Very short, very straight to the point, just kind of one sentence, um, often generally positive, but not really giving me the, any information that I could work with and take forward, which is clearly one of the important aspects of feedback and why we actually give it. So thinking about feedback, thinking about its function, thinking about the way in which it's responded to by our students, um, clearly it's a really important aspect, issue and area to look at. We find that feedback is seen as being essential to student learning and yet in the NSS scores since sort of the last 10 years if not more, it's been feedback that has consistently been rated the lowest. So that started me to thinking how can we address that particularly within the field of performing arts and even though you might not be from a performing arts background, hopefully the solution that I'm going to put forward um, may be able to be adapted by yourselves in your own programs. The quote that I have at the bottom there I think sums up why feedback is, is so important, but also why it's been scoring so low in the, N in the NSS. Um, students not really receiving information on how they're going to improve, and surely that's the clearest, most direct function of feedback, and also how they should think differently about the work that they handed in, so when they return to do another assignment, they can put those changes, that put that advice into practice, as it were. So when we start to think about feedback, let's break it down into four different categories that we can think of in order to be able to analyze whether the feedback is proving um, sufficient, adequate, uh, or not. Number one, engagement. The students need to be able to under understand it, respond to it, take on those comments. So engagement, efficiency. I think this is one of the important, most important issues when it comes to looking at new technologies for providing feedback. The staff, when I say to them, I've got this new idea about video feedback, my team will refer to me, well, how long is that going to take? Have I got to learn an entire new program? Is it going to be difficult? And so one of the drivers for me was to make this video feedback process as simple as I possibly could so I can roll it out to the members of the team. Timeliness. To what extent can students receive the feedback and then return to it and apply it as they move forward throughout the years of their degree? And quality, to what extent are we using feedback to enhance learning, enable improvement of the students that we're working with? So that kind of lays out the environment, I suppose. And then that moves me to the first set of digital solutions. Um, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. Digital solutions for feedback have been around for quite a long time. Um, audio feedback, what does that help with? Well, it allows the articulation of complex ideas. We're using our voice, using the volume of our voice, the tone that we use, that can help to add a nuance to the feedback that we're giving and aid students' understanding. Improve student understanding is where it moves on to. In nearly all of the data that's been gathered um, by canvassing students, questionnaireing, interviews, all find that compared to written, audio feedback is something that they feel that they can respond to a lot better. Um, a permanent accessible record as well, something that you can continually refer back to, listen in again. Um, that's, I think, really important when you're doing a number of similar assignments through your degree. Um, and then video feedback. It has all those same benefits as audio feedbacks, um, audio feedback does, but you can actually then begin to tie it into other areas as well. You can have talking heads, generic kind of how-to videos. So rather than having some advice on how to maybe unpack a quote, you can have a short video of someone explaining how to do that. And also screencasts of group feedback and individual feedback. But I wanted to take the best of those aspects and try and develop them into a new form of feedback, which is where I came up with this kind of director's commentary. <clears throat> the issues that I've come across while developing this project. First of all, there is resistance from staff and team members about it. Sometimes that comes down to technical problems, a certain degree of technophobia, not really wanting to engage with the platforms that are available. Um, the length of time it takes to become familiar with the process, that's often a problem, an issue, a worry that's raised. Um, and the third one there, insecurity and self-consciousness. I think somehow it's a lot easier to write written feedback um, it feels 
not anonymous, but you feel uh, sort of one removed, then you can return to it, check, you, check how you've written it, how you've put it together, rather than feeling quite exposed of just having a recording of your own voice or a shot of your own face explaining something. So these have been the concerns that have been brought up to me. The student issues while I've been working on this, pretty, uh, that really haven't been any. They, they prefer um, individual feedback, be it audio or video feedback, on their individual work rather than it being group, but that was the only preference really cited to me. Um, this is just a list of some of the responses that have been gathered. I won't read through them all now for constraints of time, but generally, again, absolutely positive from all of the student feedback gathered about these processes, be it audio, be it video, all extremely positive. The two that I think are, are really interesting is um, at the bottom there in purple, it encouraged me to take more notice of the feedback. Somehow when it's being provided in a different format, it seems to have more importance and impact. And at the bottom there, break down any real or perceived barriers between students and staff. I found that quite an interesting one. This idea that there is this kind of hierarchy that stands in between the student and the lecturer, and that actually having some kind of personalized individual video feedback helps to break down some of those barriers. So the technique that I came up with and have been sort of trying to get other people to engage with uh, is this at the bottom, video feedback via lecturer's commentary. And I'll talk through how that process works, well, how I went about putting that process together. The first thing that struck me was that for our external examining purposes, we have all of our assessments videoed. And within working within the School of Fine and Performing Arts, a lot of that is dance-based, performance, um, short theatre pieces, um, performances of songs, etc. So there's a lot of live work that takes place, all of which is videoed for the external examiners to access. However, we never go anywhere near it. We never even look at, the, look at the stuff. And indeed, it's often quite hard to even get hold of, as I, as I found when I was doing this project. But that's kind of a, a great resource to have. And I thought, well, how can we use this and integrate this um, material into the feedback that we give? Here's an example of a particular um, module and the assessment linked to that module that I trialed this process with. Um, You'll see this description here of the rather lengthy um, assessment that they're going to have to do. And when they've done that assessment, they receive their feedback on this format, which I don't know, may look familiar to you. It had to put it on its side to be able to fit it onto a slide. And that, in a way, illustrates just how um, inaccessible this kind of feedback is, I think. This huge grid with lots and lots of different things written down um, on, on the sides. After each particular criteria, in a bracket, it's as appropriate because some of these may not apply. I know that if I was receiving that as feedback, I'm not going to sit there with my magnifying glass as a student and try and work out, okay, I'll do this better, I'll try harder at that, but I'm quite good at this. It's not re it doesn't really work. It's more of an administrative bureaucratic exercise than anything, I think. Um, and then at the very bottom, just as I had in those first slides when I was a student, just a little box there for those personal comments. So the personal comments are far, far reduced uh, in comparison to this kind of tick box um, table that you get. So the process itself about how I kind of came up with this idea of video feedback and lecturer's commentary. This is sort of my... Uh, grid of the things that I did. Well, first of all, we begin, we've got the guy with the camera up there filming all of the student assessments, so I've got that. What to do with that next is to get it onto some kind of format so I can access it, so I can have it on my computer, so I can use it. The third most useful thing that came uh, in, in, into this process was, she's sadly gone now uh, to University of Warwick, Kerry Pinney. I came to her and I spoke to her about the idea that I had basically providing feedback in the same way that when you get a DVD and you can watch a director's commentary, you, you, the student, can watch back the performance you've done, the assessment that you've done, and then hear lecturer's feedback kind of spoken alongside and underneath it. What I really needed to come up with then was a particular program that was going to help me to manipulate and work with this video material. Um, what I came up with was a Camtasia Studio. Now, what this allowed you to do, basically, it's a um, desktop like this. You just drag and drop in the uh, assessment that you want to be talking about. And then as you move on, you can just hit a red button. You've got your little uh, headset with your microphone on. Hit record, and you can then record directly 
your responses to the piece of work that you're seeing uh, enacted or performed in front of you. The first few times I did this, I got quite picky and was taking out little audio sections, putting audio sections in. But as I went through it, I got better and better and actually reduced the time I was spending giving feedback because I would just be watching the work back again, looking at the notes that I'd taken when I'd read it and putting it all together. Um, other things that I could do with it, I can start to point out things, as you'll see here. Oh, I've got a thing there. Um, exclamation mark that was there to indicate when I said, why is this part of the stage not being used? Um, a purple arrow that I put up next to a piece of art that was hung. There was supposed to be a spotlight on that. So I can call very, very specific attention to things that I'm giving feedback on. So it's really allowing me to um, respond minute by minute, action by action, to the material the students have produced for their assessments. Um, this can also be intercut with um, pre-existing videos that you can link it into that maybe give them advice on a certain technique that they've not really followed. <clears throat> and then it's as easy, um, I used to load it up to Helix Media Library, but I've moved on now to just dragging and dropping into Panopto. So the students themselves, what they receive at the end is basically a link that takes them to their piece of work with my commentary over the top of it. Just to finish up with, um, I then uh, did some collection of data of my own, put together a questionnaire and got some feedback from students on how they sort of felt the video feedback technique worked. It was across the board extremely popular. Nothing but positive things were said about it. And I'll just give you an idea of some of those before I finish. Um, first, the question, was it easy to ac access and watch? Yes, they just got a link, they clicked on the link, they could access the material and watch it. Did you find the video feedback, the feedback in the video format useful? I think that top one there, this personal element, that came, came coming back again and again. The idea that the feedback was personalized to them. Um, the one I've uh, underlined in purple. Also, tutors, when writing things down, seem to point on all the negatives, and that makes you feel bad, thinking there are no positives. But having this, you can hear which bits they liked, and, which, and that makes you feel much better. This came up again and again. The fact that even if I was giving um, a fairly poor mark, let's say, for a piece of work, the fact that they could actually identify the parts of it that were liked made, I suppose, um, sugared the pill somewhat for them. Um, again, I was able to see and understand the reasons of why I got the grade I received. And that, again, is a continual problem. Students not, I don't know, feeling short-changed. Students coming up to you and saying, I worked really hard on this, I don't understand why I got such a poor mark. The fact the feedback isn't really revealing that to them in the detail that they need. Um, <clears throat> uh, other comments that came up time and time again ideas of how they could improve their work. This notion of the feedback being fair, once I read that response, I was extremely pleased. The notion that actually they're understanding why they're getting that mark and the feedback being linked to this. Um, also request that they would like to have had it over the three years that they've been at the university. I did this particular exercise right at the end of their degree and some of them said they would like to have had it running through, through their whole three years. Um, as you can see, popular across the board in every single question, there was sort of no negative aspects to it. The one thing that did come up in terms of ways in which it could be done better is they expressed a desire to ha sort of have the feedback done live with them. So rather than receiving just the, just the link of the video with my feedback already on it, of actually having the video with them. So we have a sort of Viva tutorial with the video material there. I think the solution for that will be the digital crit room, which if any of you've sort of tried using it yet, I would recommend that you book yourselves in and do a session in there. Um, the touch screens, I think having that kind of format set up to show students recordings of the work that they've done and giving them feedback and to have that session, that feedback session, also recorded on Panopto so they can access it as they move forward. I think that might be the next and best step for this project. Um, the other thing that really needs to be dealt with, which I'm dealing with at the moment, is finding a solution to get the rec videos of the assessments that take place, to get them loaded up in advance onto the Camtasia Studio and then to Google Drive so they can be accessed easier by all staff members. 
Um, there's quite a lot of reading about this that I've drawn from as it influenced the project that I'm working on. Um, but I will leave it there and just say if there's anyone that's interested in trying out this particular method or has any ideas of how they might adapt it for their particular area or program, um, I'm Rob Dean. Just drop me an email, let me know, and um, be great to work together. I think that's me. Thank you. <laughs>